Now, Morocco has rejoined the African Union more than 30 years, having left it 30 years ago, back in 1984, and that was over a dispute about Western Sahara. The reunion is expected to be financially beneficial for the entire Union, but of course, not everyone's happy with Morocco's membership, as Arabella Monroe explains. After 33 years, Morocco's King Mohammed VI has joined the African Union summit for the first time. And for many Moroccans, it's about time. Morocco should have returned to the African Union ages ago. The current political situation in Africa and the problems encountered by Morocco in the Sahara played a role in the return of Morocco to its former place in order to highlight its leadership over political and economic questions. Morocco is one of the wealthier countries on the continent, which should help the AU become less reliant on international funding something it's increasingly keen to do in the face of spreading isolationism in the US and Europe and a loss of funding through more local conflicts. Libya used to be a big contributor to the African Union and since the fall of Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, this has changed. So Morocco can actually step in and become one of the important funders of the AU. And for Morocco, it opens up investment opportunities across Africa but there's still a major problem that's unresolved. The Western Sahara is disputed territory, mostly controlled by Morocco since 1976. The area is rich in phosphates and may have untapped oil reserves offshore. A 16-year-long guerrilla war against Morocco by the Algeria-backed Polisario Front ended in 1991. Since then, it's used costly legal and political channels in its quest for independence. And while there are fears that conflict could now reopen, Morocco's readmissance into the AU could be good news. It's going to be extremely difficult because there are many countries in the AU that opposed Morocco's um, rejoining the AU, but a majority, 39 states, voted for Morocco to join. So I think the hope is over the longer term that this issue could be resolved. Representatives from the disputed Western Sahara are also hopeful. We, as the Sahara Republic, welcome this decision. We welcome that Morocco come back to the continental home, sit beside his, his neighbors and brothers in the Sahara Republic. Morocco has a lot to offer the African Union in renewing its economic engagement with the rest of the continent. But if the dispute over the Western Sahara isn't settled, it could turn out to be a costly decision. Arabella Munro, TRT World. Well, TRT World's Moussin and Naimi joins me now. Uh, Moussin, you obviously cover this part of the world for us. Let me ask you about why Morocco is so concerned about holding on to Western Sahara. To the casual observer, it's just tons and tons of sand. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a desert, but uh, there are two main reasons. One of them is territorial, and the second of them is, is, uh, is economical. Um, Morocco sees, like you know, uh, Western Sahara as part of its uh, of its uh, southern provinces, and he doesn't see like you know any armed faction, especially when they are like armed by foreign countries, uh, like you know, in a, in a good eye. And they, it's obviously see them as a threat to the sovereignty of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, on the economical side. Uh, Morocco, uh, Morocco is the largest exporter, second largest exporter of phosphate after mm -hmm. China, which is mostly used in chemical industry mm -hmm. and also used uh, in agricultural sector mm -hmm. uh, for fertilizer, for example. So this is like you know a huge uh, income for Morocco. Mm -hmm. It's also a substantial reservoir of uh, of natural energy. Uh, I'm referring here to solar and and wind. And it's also an access to the um, Atlantic Ocean coast. Right. And obviously, this has an impact on fishing and also an impact on potential uh, offshore oil. Uh -huh. Okay. So by joining the African Union, what benefits will Morocco get? Well, it's a win-win situation, especially okay. at the business level. Uh, Morocco is the uh, se uh, second largest investor in Africa. Mm. Just to give you an idea, in the past 15 years, uh, the, the, uh, the investment increased by 13%, reaching 3.7 billion US dollars. And 85% of foreign direct investment of Morocco are in Africa. So that's, that's, that's a, big, uh, a big contributor to African economy. Mm. Um, we're talking like about... Uh, 
approximately 800 million US dollars a year, something right. like this. Uh, so they, uh, Morocco is present in banking, insurance, and also telecommunication. And he also has his uh, airline company, Royal Air Maroc, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, landing in more than 27 capitals in Africa, like almost half the, country, uh, half the continent. So all this like, uh, thing makes like Morocco as a, as a very important, like, you know, economical uh, partner for African Union. And by his geographic position, mm -hmm. uh, obviously Morocco is a gateway to Europe and vice versa. Via, so, via certain ports like what, Tangiers? Yeah, via, via Tangier is yeah. the closest point to Europe. It's, ah. it's like just a few kilometers separating Morocco from Spain. So that's, that's a huge like, you know, getaway for, uh, for, uh, for Europe too. Uh, so shipping would be made easier and so on. Shipping and, and, and also like, you know, yeah, and, and, okay. and also like, you know, huge infrastructure. And that's the, this, I would say this, this uh, three decades of like, you know, uh, bilateral trade deals mm. is now becoming a multical, uh, multical, uh, multilateral trade uh, deals. Okay. And that makes like, you know, the benefit for both. Okay. Mosin and Amy, thank you so much for joining us on Money.